In this recipe, we're making what I'm calling a simplified airplane controller. And by simplified, what I mean is we're not simulating aerodynamics, we're not calculating lift, drag, and so on. And in fact, we're not using physics at all. What we're going for is the feel of flying a plane, uh, where you can just kind of jump in and start flying, and there's not a complicated control scheme. I'm just using a single stick to control the plane. And this will be suitable for all kinds of flying type games where you don't need full on realistic flight physics. All right, so let's look at how we can make this. Since we're not using any physics, we're going to stick with a kinematic body for our plane. And then I've imported a mesh of this little cartoon plane, which came with an animation for the propeller. So that's why we have an animation player here. Uh, that was part of the GLTF that we imported. And then I have, had, have a collision shape here. And the collision shape, I'm just using a cylinder to, to match the fuselage of the airplane. And that's just so that I can do landing, so that the, at the end we can you know land on the ground and we can see, since this plane doesn't have landing gear or anything, we're going to slide on the belly along the ground to count as uh, having landed. Okay, and that's really all we need node-wise. All right, let's look at our script. And first, we're going to add a bunch of variables that'll allow us to configure the behavior. Uh, we're going to have a minimum and maximum flight speed, right? You can't fly below this speed. That's the minimum, and this will be our maximum. Um, our turn speed is going to be how quickly when we turn the stick left and right is the plane going to turn. And pitch speed is how quickly we're going to climb or dive when we move the stick forward or back. Uh, level speed is how quickly the wings are going to return to level when you let the stick go back to the center. Um, throttle delta, when we press throttle up and throttle down, that's how much the throttle is going to change when we press it. And then acceleration is how quickly the plane is going to accelerate um, or decelerate to a given speed when you change the throttle. And so we have our forward speed. That's how fast we're going to be flying. That's our airspeed. And then target speed is going to be what's set by the throttle, right? When you push the throttle up, we're going to increase the target speed, and the plane will accelerate up to the forward speed, right? Being capped at the maximum. And the same thing when we press throttle down. Our target speed will be lower. The speed will decrease. Okay, here's our velocity. That's the plane's forward direction that it's moving in. Um, and then these two variables are to capture the input from the uh, from the stick. Uh, I'm using an analog controller on this demo. You could also put inputs for uh, keys if you want it. Let's look at those inputs now, actually. So here we have throttle up and throttle down. I'm using the A and B buttons for that. Pitch up, pitch down, left and right are all going to be the left analog stick and the four different directions that we move them in. And again, if you want to use different controls, you can add in uh, keyboard or gamepad or whatever else you have. All right, let's look at our code for getting the input. So we have our throttle up and throttle down, which are going to increase the target speed or decrease the target speed. And I'm using min or max to clamp it to the minimum or maximum flight speed, so we can't go above or below those values. And then our turn input and pitch input are just going to be getting the action strength of that analog stick input. Okay, now we can look at movement, which we're going to do in physics process. And so we're going to call our get input function that we made. And we're going to take our forward speed and we're going to interpolate it based on our target speed so that we will accelerate or decelerate to whatever our new target speed is. Um, our velocity is just going to be our forward direction times that forward speed, right? The airplane always moves forward. And then we're going to use move and slide to actually move it. And so if we were to try running it now, I've added the plane to a test scene here, uh, just with some a ground and some obstacles that we can see. And if we try running it now, what we'll see is that if we press our throttle up button, we will begin moving forward faster and faster, 
till we get to our maximum speed and then decelerate if we press throttle down. Okay, so now we can start doing some of the turning and pitching. Let's talk, let's do pitch first. So after we get our input, we're going to rotate around the x-axis based on our pitch input. All right, since the x-axis is side to side, so that's going to pitch us up or down. And then, of course, we will move in that direction. So if we try it now, we should be able to test out pitching up and down. Climbing, diving, good. And then we can even do a loop if we want. Now for turning, we're going to do something very similar. We're going to rotate around the up vector based on our turn input. And what that's going to look like when we try running this is that we can now climb and we can turn. And so the turning, however, you notice is very flat, right? And while I'm able to turn and steer, this isn't really how airplanes turn, right? They bank when they turn. So what we're going to want to do is when we're turning, add some roll to the plane. And we're going to do this by rotating the mesh. So we're rotating the mesh based on the turn input. So the harder we turn, the steeper the bank will be. And now if we try this out, it's going to look a lot better and feel a lot more like flying an airplane. Let's see if I do a shallow bank, the wings tilt further or tilt less. So I do a hard bank, it tilts further. When I let go of the stick, the wings level out because of course the bank isn't actually what's causing our turn, but it looks like it and that's what counts. And really, that's it. That is our airplane controller. So in just a few lines of code, five or six lines in the, in the physics process for our movement, we've got a really fun to fly around little airplane. And you could adapt this to all sorts of flying-based games, right? One major thing that's missing, though, is our interaction with the ground, landing and taking off. Because now, right now, if I go down and I hit the ground, Right, we're just going to slide along it because of move and slide, and that's really not what we want. So let's talk about how we could handle landing and taking off. All right, so we're going to do this again in a simplified manner, something that just gives us the basics of what we need. And so we're going to add a variable called grounded to keep track of our state, whether we're, we've landed or are in the air. And in our physics process, there's a few things here. First of all, the rotation of the body. Right. I don't want my d wings digging into the ground when I'm taxiing on the on the on the ground. So if we're grounded, then we are not going to rotate this. We're just going to make sure to set this rotation um, equal to zero. And then if we're that way, if we're not grounded, if we're in the air, then we can do the rotation. Okay. And now, before we do move and slide, okay, we are going to want to check if we're on the floor. So this is this is to handle if we're on the ground or not. So if we're is, if is on floor, then we're going to check if we're grounded or not already. If we're not grounded, then we must have just landed. So let's set our rotation dot x equal to zero so that our plane will be flat on the ground and not nose in or nose up. And then we're also going to set grounded equal true. Um, and then since we're on the ground, we're we'll moving along the ground, we're going to add a little velocity in the y direction to sort of stick us to the ground. We could do this with move and slide and snap, move and slide with snap as well. But um, since we're already doing this, I'm just going to leave it 
this way, the result will be the same. Okay. If we're not on the on the floor, then grounded equals false. Okay. So now we have our grounded state. Okay. And then there's a couple of things we want to change in the input as well here because when we are turning or pitching, we're going to want to change these a little bit too. Okay. So the turn input, we're going to say, let's set turn input equal to zero. And let's say if forward speed is greater than a really small number, then we'll be allowed to turn. That way, if we land and come to a complete stop, we're going to we're going to not be able to turn. Okay. Um, throttle down, we also want to be able to go below the flight speed if we are on the ground. So let's set our limit of what our minimum speed can be to zero if we're grounded, else it's min flight speed. And then we'll use that in this limit function. So now we can throttle down to zero if, if we're grounded, on, if we're on the ground. And then lastly, with our pitch input, we're gonna, oops, with our pitch input, we're going to want to change this around a little bit. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say pitch input equals zero. And then if we're not grounded, meaning when we're in the air, then we can pitch down. So Okay, so we're going to subtract input, pitch down, if we're in the air. So when we're on the ground, we won't be able to nose down into the ground. That's just going to make it so that we're nice, uh, nicely driving around when we're taxiing. Okay, and then here to pitch up, if only if forward speed is greater than or equal to min flight speed. All right, so when we're on the ground and taxiing really slow, we can't take off yet. Okay, and that's going to do it. That's going to do our be our changes for being on the ground. So let's try that out. Okay, so here we are on the ground, and if I start accelerating forward, you see we're moving slowly, and I can turn and I can taxi, but I can't take off yet. If I pull back on the stick, nothing happens. But if I keep the stick pulled back and I keep accelerating, as soon as I reach that min flight speed, now I'm up in the air, and I can fly around as normal like we did before. Now if I throttle down, I'm now going that min flight speed. So if I get down here on the ground, we're going to change to the grounded state when we land on the ground. And now I'm in the grounded state, right? I'm not banking anymore, I'm taxiing. And if I throttle down, I can go all the way down to zero. So that gives us a way to land and take off that remains as remains simplified to go with the rest of our code. All right, I hope you enjoyed this one. I enjoyed making this one, and it's a lot of fun to fly around. Makes me want to make some uh, little dogfight type of game or something like that um, with this, right? Add some shooting to the plane and so on. If you have some ideas, post them in the, in the comments below, but hopefully this will inspire you to do some things with flying as well. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in a future video. You can find this recipe and lots more on the Godot Recipes website at godotrecipes.com. Here you can find a wide variety of recipes for creating the game system you need, some help on how to get started with Godot in the basics section, and lots more. I recommend you go over there and explore and let me know if there's something you're looking for that you'd like me to add, as I'm always adding more recipes over time. Right, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in a future video.